Hi, my name is Derek, and today I'm going to introduce Glazy, the free ceramics recipes library. Many of us have recipes at home inherited from parents and grandparents. Just as with food recipes, potters have a long history of sharing and passing down ceramics recipes. Our knowledge is passed along through books and workshop handouts, studio glaze books, and notes from teachers. Just as with old food recipes, our ceramics recipes might be too faded or messy to be readable or require ingredients that we no longer have access to. They might be measured in units we're not used to, or measured in volume rather than weight. Perhaps worst of all, our recipes might have been copied incorrectly. Luckily, throughout the years, a number of potters have taken on the responsibility of gathering and organizing ceramics recipes into compilations that could be shared around the world. With the birth of the internet, ceramicists began sharing information in news groups and mailing lists like clay art. At the same time, people like Linda Arbuckle, Lewis Katz, and John Sankey were collecting and organizing this information into digital databases. There were also a number of potters sharing test photos and results via personal websites, blogs, and image sharing sites like Flickr. Around 2004, Elisa liskin Claussen began sharing glaze tests in Flickr galleries, and since then, those photos have been visited millions of times. Some critical of sharing ceramics recipes note that glazes don't travel well, and that can be true for a variety of reasons. For example, take a look at these recipes in a potter's book by Bernard Leach. The recipe specified generic ingredients like feldspar, ash, and clay, but depending upon the types of feldspar, ash, and clay used, the results might be quite different. One thing we can do to ensure that ceramics recipes travel better is to use a standard measure for heat work. Pyrometric cones allow us to accurately measure heat work across different firings in different kilns. Another way to help recipes travel better is to compare and adjust their chemical analyses. Just as foods have nutritional information, ceramic recipes have chemical analyses that allow us to better understand them. Recipes can be adjusted for differences in local materials using chemical analyses. And historical analyses can even be used to create new recipes with modern materials. Luckily for us, since the dawn of desktop computing, geek potters have been creating glaze calculation software that automates and simplifies calculation. Some of these glaze calculation programs are quite lightweight, like this Excel spreadsheet, but include advanced features like the Stull chart. A number of these desktop programs have evolved through the years into web applications that can be accessed anywhere. So if we already have all these resources for ceramic recipes, why do we need glazy? Glazy is the only ceramics recipe application focused on sharing. Similar to food recipe websites that allow people to share, review, comment, upload photos, and even add new recipes, Glazy encourages everyone to share their recipes and photos of their tests. Because Glazy is a single database with thousands of recipes, we can finally explore relationships between recipes, whether based on recipe ingredients or by looking at analyses. We can identify duplicate recipes and see similar recipes based on their analyses. Glazy also has a number of features specific to ceramic recipes. For example, the ever-present chart on each page. By default, this chart shows the stall chart, but the axes can be switched to compare any set of two oxides that you wish. Glazy also allows you to search by characteristics like glaze or clay type, opacity, translucency, and even color. Glazy isn't just a website. It's the continuation of an effort started long ago. From the beginning of the internet, people have taken advantage of tools like mailing lists and photo sharing sites to share, test, and catalog glaze recipes. By sharing our ceramic recipes and working together, we can remove duplicates, identify genealogies and families of recipes, credit and honor the original authors, and create new and better recipes based on this newfound knowledge. As the data set grows, we can begin to apply statistical analysis and machine learning to reveal previously unnoticed trends and new possibilities. There's a lot of work to do. Glazy has inherited recipes passed down through various handwritten and electronic formats. Like medieval manuscripts, errors may have accumulated along the way. Many of the recipes in the database remain untested and unphotographed. It's up to all of us to help improve this data set and learn from it. So, I hope you'll join us at glazy.org.